Okay, so I kneeled again. I got my T handle. I know for a fact that Bern Sander, who is one of the most distinguished bow makers probably ever, uses something like this to do the same thing. So, what we're doing here is we're just taking material and very gently pulling it up. So, this is the same bell that we measured. Last round, it got to 10 inches. And now we're at 10 and a half. Half inch is a good amount of movement. I wouldn't want to do more than that. Because you can start to feel the metal start to get stiff under your tool. So that I'm going to kneel again. And then we'll keep on doing it until it spins out to about 13 inches is where I like to do it. We'll see how it goes. Let me do another one. This one's probably going to go a little bit better. This one measures almost 11, 10 and 7 eighths. This one has a crack up at the, well had a crack up at the rim after hammering because I folded it kind of on accident but it was at the edge so it didn't matter. So it's still got a little bit of to come off here so it's about the same for both. So we'll keep doing that until we flare them out. This is the thicker one. When they're thicker I like to stiffen them up a little bit. Great. It kind of goes without saying, the thicker the bell is, the easier it is to make. O2O is a really good size, nice sweet spot, because you see the glassy look where we worked the material and how it's dull where we didn't. The glass is what you want to look for, because that means that you're getting it hard and you're not over hardening it. O2O just does that at such a nice point of the deal. So these will get softened again and then uh, we'll come back and keep doing it. Okay, we back out. Seven inches. I love the thicker material. But for, for the Vienna horns, they need to be thinner for the sound. But for a double horn, when you do a bell the way I do it, with this amount of stretch in the flare near the rim, having that body of sound that you get from the thicker tail, thicker throat, to that really ultra thin rim, that sound is like delicious. When doing an O2O modern horn bell, I will try intentionally to stretch out near the rim a lot more than I will with a historical bell. A historical bell, you want it to be pretty much even thickness, which is, it, it's, it won't be even thickness, but you want that graduation to be tighter than you would a modern bell. Eleven, eleven and eight. This is the last one I got now. So this one measures currently, just to double check, about ten and a half. Do some hammering on this one to get it smooth, but we are at a uh, little under 11, 10 and 7 eighths. You know you're starting to get where you need to be when it runs into the top slide. You can see how much they're flaring out from this angle. Okay, I gotta iron this stuff out before we spin again. I got the fourth one over here. I have to do a repair on the seam here. I noticed the, not a crack, a little shut right there, so I dropped some more braids on it. I have to file that off and hammer it flat. It'll be fine. I'm just gonna hold off for now, get these ones spun out. Let me uh, iron these out real quick. So we'll, we will anneal these. Let those cool down, we'll go do them. Okay. This is going to be the last round. I actually went back and started poking it again on the inside with the stick. I wasn't happy with some of the spots that were opened up, but I got it where I like it now, so we're going to give one more run at it. We already hit the diameter mark we needed, so this is at about like 12 inches already. These bells are only going to be 11 and a quarter, and they have a garland, so it's no big deal. It got all fucked. It'll be fine. I haven't spun like this in a while, so it's taking a while to come back. We'll be okay. Okay. That one went great. Yay. Yep, we're good. We're fine. That'll spin down really nice. And then this is the slightly thicker one. This should be the last round, I hope, on this one. This 
one I need to, I'm stretching a bit to get up the diameter because then it's an old pattern. See what we got there. I need 12 and a half on this. And we're just so close. This way we're good, we're at like 13. Just the uh, perpendicular to the seam. It's like 12 and, 12 and 3 eighths. Let me see what we got. Oh, it's so close. I think that's close enough. This is just for one of my horns, for me, like personally me. So well, if I end up a little under 12 inches, I'm not gonna cry, Eddie. If uh, Jason Bystrom and Melanie Ditter are watching, or Greg too, this is that one pattern I brought that one day, like six months ago or something, that hadn't been rolled yet. It's an old, it's a slightly older pattern. Just a little tighter in here and a little smaller diameter up there, but we'll make it work. So I got these two over there ready to get take, take the tape off. They're already they get the tape, tape, tape in off. And then we'll put them down on the mandrel and start slapping. Okay, I went ahead and did two of them to the pre-spun step. They're right here. See how shiny they are? That's the glass we're looking for. So these are just pre-spun, ready to draw. I'm actually going to spin them one more time. I still have one more O and six to go. I want to show you this one. Right now, we just finished inside spinning. All right, so we spun it open. You can see the glass there. And what we're going to do is start to iron out and round out the tail and the flare before going into drawing because I used to do it because I didn't know about pre-spinning. You could go right to the draw bench with this, but one, your draw wouldn't be good. Like it'd be, you'd have lines and weird stuff. And two, when you go to do the final spin, you end up not getting the bell tight to the mandrel because you're trying to lay it down in the first place and it's freeze back and all that stuff. So you need to do multiple anneals and it's just not, it doesn't end well. My pre-spins tend to be as good as some other individual's final spins because some people don't spin bells tight to the mandrel and that's okay. I like to, and I like to draw my tails and all that stuff, so. So we're gonna start slapping this thing on here. I'd usually do this with the mandrel standing straight up on my table here, but I don't feel like taking it off right now. I gotta take it off in a minute anyway, so. We're gonna slap her down and burnish and all that stuff to get the flare as close as we can to here and then we'll do a pre-spin on it. So what we got here is just a couple rods. One's brass, one's steel, because that's all I could find. Move my rest. Nothing feels better than clipping your knuckles on a f***ing spinning rest. So do that, then we're gonna slap it. And then all the burn burnishing is doing this. It's ironing out the metal, but it's also releasing the bell from the mandrel. This is not right. I'm gonna anneal and then we'll come back. I annealed it and it's better now. I'm so messing with this pattern. The tricky thing when you uh, don't have someone to learn from, making your bell patterns is like very stressful. Cause you have no idea what you're doing. They're probably the most finicky part of this whole thing. I don't know what happened with this pattern. I must have cut it tight or something. You know what I might do? I might put this on the smaller mandrel. Because I don't need this third bell. I just wanted to have a third one. Let me see how it fits on that one. Because I'm don't. i not liking this. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Got that all squared away. New mandrel on the lathe. This is my uh, modern horn mandrel. I'm going to go at about 800 RPM. I'm going to use these. It's kind of funny. Just yesterday, I was talking to... And there's a group chat of a bunch of brass makers around the world. And I was asking some of the guys who do more traditional work, like hand burnishing, if they've ever used these. I don't know where this term came from. I'm pretty sure I made it up. I call these hoggers. And I'm pretty sure when Colin, who edits these videos, was here the first time, we were doing something with a trumpet belt. And I called these, he was like, what are those? And I'm like, I don't know, they're hoggers or something? Maybe that was in Minnesota, I don't know. <laughs> they like that, all, all the Europeans really like that. Um, nice little Americanism there. Apparently they just call them like, levers or hinges or something. Uh, you'll see what they do, they smooth out the tail like really well if your patterns fit good. So now, just about perfectly smooth. Good through here, good through here. At the end of the tail, the pattern's a little loose, but I can get this with a draw plate to get it nice and round, but that is like that glass finish that we, We've been talking about that burnished finish. Got something here I gotta hammer down. Sometimes the brass just gets hard in one spot and fixes it. It's 
best to chase them as soon as you can. So that's where some people stop. Some people don't draw their bells, but I think it's kind of crazy. That went great. We may just get a 12 inch bell out of this. Nice and tight too, so I gotta brush it off. I'm gonna do one more anneal on the whole thing, and then we're gonna do that same thing that we just did again, and then we're gonna st stick this down with the wood tool to get it flat, and we're gonna go at it with the metal tool to get it smooth. Okay, so I just annealed the same bell. We're gonna go for it. I really hope this one gets up to 12 inches. See where we're at. Hey, we're okay. Oh, that might be, it might be close enough. Let me uh, do a metal tool. I'm gonna move my rest. Wait till you see the rest on my new spinning lathe. It's fucking insane. That's a bell right there. Holy sh**, that's awesome. That looks like a factory bell. These all smoothed out great. What I'm gonna do is while the lathe's spinning, I'm gonna scribe a line so I can trim it round with shears. Yeah, so you can uh, you can see the line I scribed. Probably not, but I'm just gonna take some nice uh, aviation shears and just trim on that line. Actually, a little bit outside the line just so you don't trim too much because it's easier to do that. Okay, and then we'll see where we measure up. I'm not too confident on uh, hitting our mark here. Okay, well we can work with that. It's like 12 and 3 eighths. What I was shooting for was 12 and a half, but that gives me margin. This should be able to get a 12 inch bell out of it, which is awesome. But you can see how glassy smooth the entire thing is. This is perfectly round up here perfectly smooth up here. The inside is perfectly smooth. Actually, it's not. Uh, I gotta do one thing. I'll show you that. This is a trick that I saw Duda do at one point. Of course, I don't have a f***ing file now. So I saw him do this once and it, I tried it and it really helped me a lot. So on the seam, after you pre-spin, which is what we just did, you take a file and you just file very lightly over the seam. You're not digging in super hard. You're not trying to get every little dark spot out. You're just taking off that top layer of the, where the seam and the brass overlap because there's always gonna be a little line around the seam where it's overlapped. So what we're doing here is we're taking off that like maybe half a thousandth of an inch layer. And then up near the, the notch here, you're gonna file a bit more because you got a lot to work with up there. And what this does is that helps you so we draw up to about here. After you draw, you go to final spin. You'll be spinning down a fresh layer of brass here that will even out with this in this plane. But that gets rid of that top layer, which we've been just keeping just to kind of keep the bell with some thickness. Because otherwise, you, you always want to take that layer off on both sides because the seam's always going to be a bit higher. So this allows us to take that bottom layer on here so that when we go to sand the bell, we're not dealing with that layer. We're dealing with actual good material underneath might not make sense to a lot of people, but once you start figuring that stuff out and doing this kind of work, it'll make sense. Because everyone assumes the seam roller gets the bell perfectly, or the seam perfectly flat, and it does a really good job. It's basically, it's like how people think dent machines are dent machines, when in reality they're just fixtured burnishers, right? This seam roller is the same thing, it's, it's a burnisher. Yeah, and up here at the seam, at the, uh, end of the flare is always going to be thicker and we don't have to worry too much about that right now but it's always good to try to eat have it be even that sounds pretty cool oh only only real ogs know what that is so i'm going to do the other one and then we're going to draw the bells